Hello everyone, welcome to the update for the match for 2024. I'm Dr. Gutwein, the Program Director at Jacoby Medical Center. And uh, over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about four different topics. We'll touch on signals, uh, ERAS, repeat applicants, and the interview day. And just have a few tips or tricks that came up over this last year that made me think you might want to know about them. So first, we'll start with signals. Uh, in the past couple of years, you've had seven signals to use. And this coming year, it will be switching for internal medicine to three gold and 12 silver signals. And this makes a difference. Uh, the programs will very likely almost all look at the gold signal applicants first to select people to interview and then go to the pile of silver signal applicants. And only then, finally, if there are even any spots left, go to the applicants that haven't signaled at all. So it's really even more important than ever before to do your homework and figure out not what are the best 15 places, but what are the 15 places you would fit in best and that you would be happiest at and learn best at. And you'll find some of that on the websites, talk to people if you know them that have gone to those programs, etc. But really do the homework on it. And uh, find out if anyone from your school or for the IMGs from your country has gone to that program before, because if no one has ever gotten in from there or ever gotten an interview, you may not want to signal that place because a lot of programs do have a track record for where they take people from. Jacoby happens to be very broad in what we interview, but not every place is like that. All right, let's move on to ERAS. A few things I noticed. One of them is um, there are programs that have more than one track, like Jacoby has three tracks. And you really want to tell a consistent story in your application. So if you're writing in your personal statements that you're interested in cardiology, for instance, and you're checking off all three tracks of Jacoby and one of them is primary care track, well, that doesn't tell a consistent story and just makes you look like you're really um, having a hard time figuring out what to do in the future. I think you should probably try to pick just the track or occasionally two that are appropriate to your future goals. Uh, second, you should probably be putting um, in the address area of ERAS the temporary address where you currently live and the permanent address where you have permanent residence, especially for IMGs in a different country. I see too many times it's just a copy of the same address, even if it's not really your permanent address. Uh, third, marks sheets for countries where they send marks sheets. Some places do it well and give you the actual grades and things like that, the actual marks, but some places only send how many hours you spent on different rotations there. And of course, that's relatively useless for most of us as program directors. Uh, so if you know you come from a program that doesn't send the marks sheets properly, uh, send them automatically. Just email them to the programs through ERAS that you are applying to, or at least to the 15 that you signaled. Uh, a perfect example might be from India, the school Molana Azad never sends the right marks sheets. And I always have to email the applicants asking them to send them, and that just delays the chance of them getting spots. Another thing about ERAS, um, on the CV, please put the rotations honestly. If you did uh, some sort of office rotation in your country or house officer position, uh, don't put it down as a research position. In America, if you did an observership, don't put it down as an externship or an elective. Many times I'll read a letter of recommendation and the person who is writing it will write that this person did an observership with me. And then if it says on your CV that you did an externship, it just makes you look like you're trying to trump up what you did and lie. Uh, and you really want to be, again, consistent. Um, don't get caught in, in that kind of situation. All right. Uh, also, uh, on your resume, you should put how many weeks you spent on any given rotation. Uh, if you're putting six weeks on your resume, on your CV, and then in the letter of recommendation from that person, it says, I only worked with this person for two weeks, it can make the person reading it wonder uh, if you're just trying to um, enhance your resume inappropriately. Uh, let's move on to the repeat applicants. So some of you unfortunately won't match and have to apply again. Uh, hopefully that won't be you. Um, but one good thing you can try to do is get a postdoc research position. Uh, helps many people get research on the resume. Sometimes it adds a clinical component to it. And then you can get new letters of recommendation that may be better than the ones that you had sent the first time, which 
might have been why you didn't get interviews the first time. It's because you guys waive your rights for the letters generally, uh, and you won't know that maybe you had letters that were only mediocre, and this way you can get new letters and, and submit those. Also, just my opinion is I wouldn't re-signal the same programs. Uh, maybe not everyone agrees with me, but I think if you didn't get the interview the first time, you're probably not going to get it the second time. And even if you got the interview the first time, uh, if you didn't match there, you're probably only going to get ranked in the same spot again, uh, unless you have a really major advance in your application, an immense amount of new research, or something along those lines. All right, lastly, let's talk about the interview day just for a few seconds. First, don't wear very dark clothing on the interview day. It can give a, a subtle, subconscious negative bias that you don't want. Uh, second, don't lie to the interviewer. If you're caught in a lie, you're, you're shot. You're never getting into this place. You're not even going to get ranked. And also, don't talk over your interviewer. I can't tell you how many times I've asked questions or made a comment to the applicant that I'm interviewing, and before I've even finished, they're already starting to answer or starting to jump on top of what I said, and, and it just doesn't come across well. You really need to just take your time and wait it out and then give an appropriate answer. Lastly, at the end of the interview day, no matter who's doing the sign-off, the program coordinator, the chiefs, the program director, whoever, um, just sign off gracefully. Don't try to stick around too long, and it makes it just an awkward sign-off. Say goodbye like everybody else, smile, and end your interview day. Anyway, hopefully some things from those four topics will help you for the coming interview season. Good luck, everyone, and I hope I see some of you on the interview days. <laughs>